Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about how to find Docker images and also why you should always look. Um, you know, I'm just going to go back to one of my favorite programmer quotes, which is, be lazy. We will encourage you to develop the three great virtues of a programmer. Laziness, impatience, and hubris by the great Larry Wall in Programming Perl. And, you know, so going and looking for Docker containers embodies all these things. You're being, you know, you're being awesomely lazy or efficient by going and looking to see if somebody else has already done it. You're being impatient by saying like, okay, let me, let me just go and find something quick. And hubris, I mean, you don't want to be spending all your time reinventing the wheel. You want to be going and doing cool things. You know, then of course there's always a very high probability somebody has done this before or something very similar. Even if you think I have this very, very specific setup, you know, just go, go take a look. There's probably something very, very similar. Um, and even if it's not exact, it's, you know, it's generally enough to get you started. So just as a quick example, I am going to show you something. So a lot of times I see people, they will install MySQL and Docker and they get it like all set up and all customized and all this kind of thing. And you know what? That's unnecessary. All that you really have to do is Google just Docker MySQL. And this is pretty much what I always do, Docker and then the name of the thing that I want. So then you can see right here in Docker Hub, which is kind of, um, you know, like the home planet of all the Docker images. There's a ton of things in here. You can go and you can just kind of browse and look around. But most often I just Google and it just comes right up. And then of course you can see right here, Docker pull. You can go and look at the available tags. Most often the tags correspond to the versions. So if you're looking for like a very specific version of MySQL or MongoDB, or Python or whatever it is that you're looking for, just go and just have a look at the available tags. And then you'll see there are lots and lots and lots of available tags here for all the different versions. And then um, you can also get quite a lot of like handy information from the description. So you can go, I mean, you know, they have all kinds of nice stuff here. Quick reference, where to get help, where to file issues, who it's maintained by, um, the image updates. The source, so this is if there is a GitHub repo, you can go and you can look here in the source directory to see where exactly the Docker image is built, which can be really, really handy. Like if you're like, this gets me, you know, 90% of the way there and I just need to get the other 10%, go look at the GitHub repo and see exactly how it's built. And then quite often you can take that and you can start building and you can start modifying. And I'm going to show you how to do that later. But this is like really, really handy to have. And then, you know, then there will be all kinds of nice things, um, you know, so then they tell you exactly how to use it, how to start it, how to set environmental variables, which environmental variables you should set. So most of the, most of the databases these days, they actually have environmental variables to really easily get you like up and started really fast. You can actually set from the command line, the MySQL, the root password, the user, um, like just a regular user, the regular user password, and a database, and all of those will just be automatically created for you. You don't have to write a SQL script that tells you, okay, do this and do this and do this and do this. And then my other favorite one is um, the Miniconda 3 Docker image, and I use this for, I mean, I use this like all the time. I use this for basically everything. Anytime I ever want to do anything, like with Python or with R, I always use this as my base image. So for pretty much any application, basically I use this. And then, you know, and then you can see and they have some nice things and they can show them to you. Um, you know, they show you the usage, they show you again, the GitHub repository, that's really important to have. They show you a quick example of how to open up a Jupyter Hub notebook. I mean, all this stuff is great. And then, I mean, again, you can also look at the tags and see what's in here. You can take a look. Oh, I didn't mention this before. You can actually take a look at the Docker file itself. You don't even necessarily have to go to the GitHub repo. Often they'll be copying um, files and things around, so sometimes you need to. But I mean, you can see right here, this is what goes into building this, um, this image. And so you can very quickly take this and modify it by just going and cutting and pasting this and putting it someplace else or using this as your base image, which is what we are going to get into in the next lecture. 
So I hope you've seen this and that you're convinced and that you're not like always running around and building everything from scratch. Go look out there. There's a lot of images. A lot of them are like very nice. They have very handy little helper features like setting different environmental variables. Um, you know, they have like, you know, they have everything that you need installed to get started, like things that you wouldn't even necessarily need to know. Like I think I was in installing Miniconda on a server and I didn't know that I needed bzip too. And so I was actually able to go to the Docker image and just say like, wait, wait a minute, how like how do I get this installed? And then, oh yeah, here we go, bzip too. Okay, so um, so there you go. I will see you in the next lecture. Thanks.